this webinar, Distribution 101, and how working with distribution partners can help you to grow your digital footprint and be found online. Thank you for joining us today. My name's Naomi Farrelly and I'll be your presenter. And joining me on tech support is Avril. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a collaborator with Sparrowly Group and I have 20 years of experience working in, in the tourism industry. I've worked with numerous tourism products to develop distribution plans that have helped to grow their business. So some housekeeping before we begin. Your video and audio has been disabled for the presentation, um, but the presentation today will be recorded and it will be sent out to everyone who has registered along with a copy of the presentation slides. It's also going to be shared on the Sparrowly Group channels. You can come back to the recording and watch it anytime on demand and we encourage you to share it with your colleagues as well. If you've got any questions throughout the session today, please pop them into the chat box, which you can open at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll collate them and go through them together at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you are having any technical issues, pop them in the chat box as well and Avril will respond to you directly. So for now, let's get started. I'm going to turn off my camera um, and we'll get into the content. So what are we going to cover today? Let's break it right down. What we're going to talk about is what is distribution? What does that actually mean? Why working with distribution partners is important. Then we're going to talk about commissions and why you should pay them. How to work with distribution partners and importantly, how do you choose the right distribution partners to work with? We've only got 20 minutes, so I just want to give you a really broad understanding of some of the key principles and concepts that you need to consider when working with distribution partners. And we'll share more resources after the webinar as part of the follow-up tomorrow so you can keep learning after today's session. So firstly, let's have a quick look at the tourism business journey. Some of you may have seen this slide before. As a tourism business grows, it moves along the spectrum from being business ready. So that's having the fundamentals in place and starting to operate your business through to tourism ready, which is really about defining and developing your experience and your tourism offering, and importantly, being directly bookable online. Then once you've got that in place, you move to becoming distribution ready. That's working with distribution partners. And that's what we're really going to focus on today. Then the final step in um, the spectrum is to become export ready. And that's entering the inbound to distribution system and working with international markets. So as we know, international travel is kind of on hold at the moment. So we're not going to delve into that level of detail. We're just really going to focus on the distribution ready side. But if you can nail distribution ready and work with domestic distribution partners, you'll be ready for those international partners when international travel returns. So distribution, what does it actually mean? Let's define it. So by definition, distribution is all the channels through which a customer can buy your product or experience. It's the process of marketing and supplying products through various different channels. And developing a distribution plan is really about spreading your product through the marketplace so that a large number of people can see it and buy it. So to do that, you need to work with different distribution channels. So that's really a chain of businesses or intermediaries through which a good or service passes until it reaches the end customer. And for us in tourism, that customer is the visitor coming into your business. So a great example of this um, in the food sense is Carmen's Muesli. So Carolyn Creswell bought a small muesli business many, many years ago. Um, it was handmade muesli and sold at local markets. She wanted to grow the business and see her products on the shelves of Woolworths, Coles and the local IGA. To do, to do this, she had to work with the food distribution network. It didn't magically just appear on the shelves at Woolies. Um, so her product now passes through many hands from the producer to the wholesaler, the retailer, um, and then to the end user, that's the customer and where it ends up in our breakfast bowls. To work with these distribution partners, she had to make some changes to the way that her business worked and operated. She had to get barcodes for her packaging. She had to change the way she packaged her products. And she had to look at inventory management systems as well so that she could track um, where her product was going. By doing this and by being a pretty savvy businesswoman that responded and adapted to her customers' needs, Carmen's Muesli has grown uh, to have a turnover in excess of $100 million a year and is now exported to 32 countries. So... In travel, the same thing happens. There's a range of distribution partners that you can work with who are going to market and sell your products and making it more visible to customers and in turn help you to grow your business. So once you've got this distribution plan that we'll talk about today in place, customers can find you and book your product in a range of different channels, either before they arrive in your destination or after. 
And making a product more visible means that it's more likely to be booked. And that makes sense, right? If more people can find you online, then there's more chance that they will book you. So for today, we're really gonna focus about the domestic distribution system um, and local distribution channels that you can work with. Why? Because traditionally businesses should build a strong domestic base, that bread and butter business, before they diversify into the international market. And like I said before, because now international travel is on hold. So growing domestic business from existing and new markets has to be our focus. The fundamentals are the same. So if you can now working with domestic distribution, you'll be ready to work with those international travel, travel distributors when the market returns, if it is right for your business. So who are the domestic travel distributors? Well, first and foremost, you have yourself. Um, so uh, once you are a tourism ready business, you should have um, direct bookings available via your website, also in phone or in person. This is the most important first step. Your own website is like the home base for your online footprint. So start here and build this first. Then once you've got your own direct online bookings happening, you want to talk to some local booking agents maybe. The visitor information centre is always a really important one. Whether or not your visitor information centre takes bookings, um, they're still talking to customers and can definitely tell them about your product. Maybe local accommodation, if you're an, a tour or an experience, they can refer their guests to you um, and act like a booking agent. In some places, there are actual dedicated booking centres. And don't forget retail travel agents. Yes, domestic travellers still actually use them. So Flight Centre and Hello World are being used more and more these days by domestic travellers. So they're important booking agents as well. There's also specialist distributors. So there's a number of really niche providers that support different parts of the sector, like weddings, conferences, events, accessible tourism and group tourism. So you might wanna look at these if you work in those markets. Then we've got social media and online listings. So we know that social media and online is really important for our digital footprint and for the marketing of our business. All tourism businesses should have a Google My Business listing and an ATDW or a Get Connected listing if you're in New South Wales set up. If you don't have that, we'll send you the resources on how to do it after today. Facebook and Instagram are really key social channels for tourism businesses to be on. And many of us are already there. But now these um, products are really shifting and becoming into the e-commerce space. So you can actually book products and experiences through Google Reserve, Facebook and Instagram these days. Um, and then other listing sites, of course, you can connect through booking platforms or back to your website to really expand out your distribution when customers are searching. And then we have online travel agents. And this is a lot of what we're going to talk about today in the webinar. So online travel agents or OTAs, we're probably all uh, familiar with them and maybe have used them when we've been planning our own travel. Particularly when we look at hotels, traditionally um, a customer might be looking at booking.com or hotels.com um, on Airbnb and looking at different options and comparing prices before they actually go and book directly sometimes with the product themselves. So we've got accommodation booking sites like booking.com, Expedia and Airbnb and there's a growing market for experience and activity booking sites as well. So there's Via Tour, Get Your Guide, Red Balloon, Adrenaline.com and a new one in the marketplace is Clute.com. If you're a restaurant, there's booking sites for you too, like The Fork, which is like Fire Tour, part of the TripAdvisor family. So there's lots of different partners available. So which are the right ones to choose and why should you work with them anyway? So let's start with the why. Essentially, working with the right distribution partners is going to help you to really extend your reach. It's going to make your business more visible online and offline and enable you to reach customers way beyond what you could on your own. Um, you know, we're all small tourism, small businesses, generally speaking, in the tourism space. Um, so we can really use distribution partners to leverage and maximise our reach and our exposure and help to grow our business. So some of the, the reasons why distribution really matters and why it's important to you, it's going to allow you to reach new customers and markets. So working with partners, you can speak directly to their, their customers um, and they might be from different markets as well to others that you've traditionally worked with. They're going to provide you regular business from a broader market base. So you've got more people out there, you know, booking um, and being able to see your business and be able to book your business online. If you think about the, the Carmen's Muesli example, you know, she's now got this greater reach because she's on supermarket shelves across the country um, and internationally that she wouldn't ever have been able to have if she just stayed um, working on her own from that market stall. 
Distribution partners can also give you feedback on your product offering and how to tailor it for particular markets. They have a lot of insights about their customers, what they're looking for, the types of experiences or accommodation that they're after and their specific needs. So it's a two-way relationship and they can give you some insight um, on ways that maybe you can tailor your product for a particular market. It really helps you to expand your sales team. So, you know, we all run on pretty lean marketing budgets and working with distribution partners is a really low cost way to actually start to amplify your sales and marketing messages. It's like actually having an extra sales team on the ground working with you. And finally, it creates what we call a billboard effect. So, you know, we have our own websites and we're all working to increase our own digital footprint in our space. But by working with these distribution partners, they've got massive sales and marketing teams behind them and a whole lot of data that most of us could probably um, only dream of. Um, and they use that to really get your product out there. And when people are searching, if we keep in mind that... Um, you know, travellers are researching on a range of different sites when they're really planning their holidays. It's going to help us to really amplify um, and reach more people and be seen by more people. They may book through that booking platform or it might just be creating brand awareness for you and the customer might come back and book directly with you. So that's a lot of stuff and a lot of reasons why you should work with distribution partners. But What's all this going to cost, I hear you say, you know, there's a cost to everything, right? There's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, and if we think again about Carm, uh, Carolyn and her muesli, that, you know, Woolies and Coles aren't going to sell Carmen's muesli just because they like Carolyn. There's something in it for them. They're a business as well, um, and they are making money out of it. So when you work with travel distributors, it's the same. Um, they are a business too, and they need to make some money. So working in the travel distribution system, the fee that you pay to your distribution partners, so that's your inbound tour operator in the international space, the wholesalers, the online travel agents, the specialist distributors that we've just talked about, the fee that you pay for them to market, distribute, and sell your product is called commission. Um, it's their income and it pays for their operation and the services that they provide. So it pays for their staff, it covers their own marketing costs and the sales costs, and it keeps the lights on and the computers running in the business. So it's really important that you look at the commission that way. A lot of people, when I say you have to pay commission, are really um, reluctant to do so. But you need to think about it as part of your overall marketing mix. It's, it's a marketing cost that you're paying. But unlike an advertising cost, putting an ad in the paper, for example, when you work with distribution partners, you're only paying that commission when you actually receive a booking and you have a bum on your bed or a person, you know, coming through your door on your tour. So what sort of commission are you looking at paying? Well, that depends on the type of um, partner that you're working with. So this is just a bit of a standard commission table with some, um, oh, sorry, looking away too freely there, <laughs> um, with some standard levels of commission that you could expect to, to pay. So when you're working with a retail travel agent, it's 10%. A tour wholesaler or a specialist distributor might be 20%. An online travel agent, 20%. And the, in the international market, um, working with inbound tour operators, it's 25 to 30%. Um, and there's some important terminology that you need to consider when you are thinking about rates um, and pricing. And that's the, the concept of gross rates or retail rates. Um, which is what the consumer pays, the, the advertised price for your product or experience, and then net rates. So the net rate is the amount that's paid to you by that agent. So that's the gross rate less the agent's commission. So as you start to work in the space, you've got more resources to help you, but it's important that you understand those key concepts. So I know when I talk to businesses about starting to pay commission, let's say you have to pay 30% commission to an inbound tour operator, the eyes kind of roll back in their head and they say, oh, that's never going to happen. Um, so it's important to think about your overall business mix, um, to think about where your bookings come from. So... The aim isn't to have all of your bookings come through distribution channels. You actually want to build a mix of different partners and a whole range of different um, streams for your bookings to come through. So this table kind of talks you through that and it is complicated and takes a while to get your head around. But basically as a business, you know, we want to build that direct bookings first. So if in this example, um, you've got around 50% 50 of the business is coming from direct bookings where you're not paying any commission at all. Then if we work down, you've got um, retail bookings that come through retail travel agents where you're paying 10% commission. That might be about 10% of your business. Then if you're working with wholesalers or specialist uh, distribution partners, maybe that's 20% of the business um, and you're paying them 20% commission. 
And then the online travel agents, um, again, might be about 20% of your business where you're paying 20% commission. So you can see in the red, um, there's two key numbers to look at. So there's this extra business that we've got um, through our distribution partners, which in this case is around 4,000, which is $4,100. Um, and we've got that for a commission of nine, we've paid out commission of $900 to get that extra $4,000 in revenue. So it's probably a better return on investment potentially than putting an ad in the paper. But overall, if we look down the bottom, the average commission that we're paying on every single booking that we receive is 10%. So that's really important to remember that we're not asking when you work with distribution partners to pay commission on everything, only on those extra bookings that come through those distribution partners. Um, and it's really important to, as you, if you want to grow your business to consider that opportunity cost of not working with the distribution partners. So if you weren't working with those booking agents, you wouldn't have received that extra $4,100 of business. So what does that that opportunity cost look like. So that's a really quick overview of um, why you would work with distribution partners. But let's, you know, look at the how. Um, what do you need to actually do to work with a distribution partner? What, what, do, what are they looking for from businesses? Well, firstly, let's remember that it's actually about a partnership. You want to build a two-way relationship. So it's going to be a long-term relationship that you should look to build with these people um, and build trust with them over time. But you can start out by doing and delivering a great product and experience and doing all the things that really a good tourism business should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. So you should be delivering quality products and experiences. You should be reliable and efficient. You know, make sure that, you know, if you are going at 10 o'clock every day, that your tours leave at 10 o'clock every day um, and being efficient in your communication. Provide a really high level of customer service, both to your visitors, um, the customers that are coming into your business, but also with that distribution partner. If they've got questions or any issues, make sure you're responding to them quickly. Have a really consistent pricing policy. So that comes back to, you know, understanding um, the commission structures that you need to be paying, but also having that same consistent rate um, across all different platforms. You want to make communication seamless, again, both with the customer, make sure you've got that um, seamlessly working, but also with the distribution partner and be really responsive to any feedback and reviews that you might receive. As I said before, that distribution partner can really help you with feedback about, you know, what their customers are looking for. Um, and you can use that to actually improve your business. Then you also want to make sure that you're distribution ready. So what does that mean? Um, what do you need to do to start to work with distribution partners? You need to understand commission structures, which we've just touched on briefly today, and the concept of net and gross rates. You really need to understand that commission and make sure you build that commission into your pricing. So you need to structure your rates to allow for that commission. Don't just add that commission on top. You need to have a consistent rate across all your booking channels. So this is called rate parity, so that you're not actually undercutting um, your distribution partners on any, any other site. You want to have that consistent rate delivered across all the different platforms that you might be working with. You need to really understand the different types of distribution channels that we talked about and understand who their customers are um, as well and how they work. And importantly, you need to have systems and processes in place to be able to work with them. So you do need to have your own online booking platform and ideally one which will integrate with both your website and the distribution partner's website that's, so that they connect and talk to each other. And with that, you should also have an inventory management system or a channel manager which will allow you to manage your bookings across multiple sites and avoid that issue of double booking. So if you need some help in terms of that online booking platform and channel manager and to understand that, we do have some resources that we can share with you after today. So what distribution partners should you be working with? It's a really good question, right? And there's every business is different. Um, so the answer is going to be different for each of you. But really, um, you really need to think about your ideal customers. And uh, any of you that have worked with us through any of the mentoring programs at Sparrow Group will understand that we talk a lot about ideal customers um, and you might have done some work about around identifying those. So remember that your distribution um, partners are an extension of your sales and marketing activity. So the customer really does need to come first. So you wanna ask yourself a couple of questions. Who are your ideal customers? And really get clear on that. Where do they come from in terms of their travel trends? Um, where are they located? How do they research travel? So what sites are they using when they research travel? And then importantly, how do they book their trips and their experiences? So are they using online travel agents, um, for example? 
um, or are they booking directly? So what platforms are they using? So it, as an example, an older demographic might be more reliant on TripAdvisor and using destination websites when they're researching. And a younger market might be more likely to get their inspiration from Instagram and booking on Airbnb. So once you understand who your customers are, you can then do some work to really align with the right booking platforms. And then what you wanna do is to really create a targeted plan. So look at those questions and, and the answers that you came up with when you looked at your ideal customers and where they, they're looking for information and booking. And remember as you develop a plan that you know less is more, there's plenty of distribution partners out there and there's new options popping up every single day. So research the ones that are the best for your business. Um, take a staged approach. So you don't need to go out and list with all of the online travel agents at once. Start with a few, see how that works and then add some more into your mix. And make sure the ones that you choose are the ones that are speaking to your ideal customers. You wanna build relationships and trust with your distribution partners as well. So take some time to get to know them. Um, generally speaking, you will have a product manager that works with the distribution partner. So talk to them about what they need and how it's best for you to work together. And keep them up to date with any current information and rates. As things change, let them know uh, about changes in your business. Anything new, a new product or a price increase, anything like that. Make sure you're regularly communicating with them. And importantly, you'll want to track and monitor your bookings as well. So make sure you know where your bookings are coming from and which distribution partners are delivering for you. And like we said before, ask for some feedback. Keep learning, learning about the customers um, and learning about your product and your business as well. So that's a very quick rundown on distribution and how it works. But let's just recap on some of the key things that we've talked about today. So distribution extends your marketing reach and working with a range of distribution partners is really important and it's going to create a billboard effect for you, providing exposure for your business and creating awareness. The commissions are a fee that you pay when a distribution partner books your product or experience. Think of them as a marketing expense and one that you only pay when you have bums on seats. Make sure you build that commission into your pricing structure. Don't just add the commission on top of your rates, build it in. Um, like marketing, there's no one size fits all approach to distribution. So really be tailored about what's best for your business. Build some long-term relationships with your partners. Um, pick the right ones for you. And don't sit and forget, test, track and learn. So um, just like your marketing, any advertising you do, you'll be testing and you'll be tracking and you'll be um, improving and iterating as you go. So it's the same with distribution. So tomorrow morning, we'll send you a follow-up email from the webinar with some tools and some resources to help you um, to keep on learning. So you get the presentation slides and a copy of the recording from today and some extra tools and resources as well to help you. Um, feel free to forward that on to any other business owners that you think might benefit from the information or your colleagues that couldn't make it today. And of course, we're always here as well to answer any questions that you have after the webinar as you start to get in and do some of the work. So thank you for the time to join us today. I really appreciate how important it is to, you know, the time that you, how valuable your time is and that you've given it to listen to the webinar today. I think we do have some questions. Um, so I might pop my video back on and answer any questions that we might have. Avril, have you got some questions? I need to unmute myself to be able to ask them to you. <laughs> um, yes. So um, before you even approach a distribution partner or an OTA, um, are there any assets or internal resources that a business should create? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. So it is a really good idea if you want to work with distribution partners and just for your business in general to have a, a suite of assets ready to go. So you've got information on hand and can work with them easily. So what I'd suggest is pulling together a bit of a toolkit with a description of your business. Um, also, like a short description, maybe just, you know, 50 words and a longer description, maybe up to 200 words to describe your business. Um, product fact sheets. So we can share some templates on that, the ten, um, which just talk about the specifics of your business in a factual way, not like the marketing stuff but really factual about you know what time does tours depart and what's the bedding configuration of rooms and things like that also rate sheets and we've got some templates of those that we can share as well and then getting together a suite of images as well um, that showcase each of your different experiences tours or your different room types so to pull that together and then make it really easy to share with distribution partners when you start to work with them perfect um, another one that we have is what are some things or are there particular requirements that a business should 
build out a list of sorts when choosing distribution partners? I think when you're thinking about your distribution partners, it's really important to come back again, like I said, to those ideal customers. That's the most important thing. So ask them some questions about who their customer base is and they'll have all that data, particularly the online agents that have um, heaps of, you know, deep data about their customers that they drill right down into. So talk to them about their customers. Their product manager will give you some advice as well. So I'd start with who your ideal customer is and then go and do a bit of research about the different platforms to see which one's the best fit. Okay, great. So um, I'm a business owner and I have a couple of platforms that I'd like to work with. Um, what are the next steps that I should do? Do you just list straight away or as, yeah, what, what do you think yep. you should do? So the first thing you should do is reach out to those um, distribution partners that you want to work with. So we can help you if you need some introductions to those partners. We've got some lists and most of them through their website will have a section where a supplier can actually sign up directly. So get in touch and complete the application form to work with them. Um, that's the first step. And then generally speaking, a product manager will contact you and they'll talk to you about your product or experience, um, get some more information from you and maybe give you some feedback about what their customers are looking for to help you to refine your experience as well. So the first step is to reach out and start that conversation with them. Perfect. And another thing to note on that is that um, most that we've come across also um, provide free trials or can do um, like a, a walkthrough and walk you through the product as well. So yeah, um, yeah maybe look at doing those things as, as well. Yeah, definitely. Great. Great. That's it. I'll, I'll over right. to you to finish up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks again for your time um, and for joining us on the call today. Our next webinar is um, on the 16th of December. It's the Power of the Network, and it's all about working um, within the tourism ecosystem, working with your local tourism organisation, the regional, state, and even the national ones, and how you can really leverage that as part um, of your marketing activity. Um, so we hope to see you there. You'll get the details with the follow-up to sign up that one but thank you again for um, making the time to listen to the webinar today i hope you found it useful and um, my contact details are there if you've got any questions please do get in touch and have a great day everyone